what is open run and why we are why we are uh, starting to study and introducing open run particularly here in the philippines and uh, in other parts of the country okay um usually there are major challenges no sa telco world particularly mga telco operator um three major challenges is that first is the faster time to market so it includes the faster rollout for new features services and capabilities so like for example we have to deploy 5g so if you want to deploy it faster so we need to have a mechanism or a technology or a way uh, of deployment na mas mabilis no natin may deliver yung services sa ating mga subscribers and uh, deploying a new technology will have a significant investments in new networking technologies and as well as there is a need for flexibility um there are radios or equipment that are like for example can only be used for this kind of purpose no specific purpose equipment okay so there are equipment that are, that are only capable of lte there are equipment that are um cannot be upgraded anymore okay so flexibility is not there next is better performance so it uh, um evolves during the pandemic uh when people starts to stay at home and then work work from home okay there's a lot of ano no there's a lot of uh uh capacity demand happening so for operators they need to expand and improve the system capacities this one and better coverage so if people are staying uh indoors nowadays uh, so <clears throat> we need to improve the coverage and improving the coverage and enhancing the capacity so we know that there's an impact in the quality right so that's the triangle of uh, the design you have the coverage the have the capacity and then you have the quality these are the three that you are balancing if you are if you are in the radio network designing even though you have a good coverage if the capacity is not enough so your network is not good if you have good, good coverage and then you want to increase the capacity but increasing the capacity means you need to add more frequencies in your network and then it will introduce interference so quality will suffer okay now there's a there's a fourth dimension on this uh, design there's the dimension of c another c which is cost okay so whenever you are you are designing a network you don't need you just don't need to consider the coverage the capacity the quality of course you need to consider the cost okay so that's the fourth fourth dimension in the designing process also yeah so lower cost so cut in energy consumption uh equipment uh, cost must be lower and reduce the capex and the opex when we say capex capex means capital expenditure so if you buy if you build the new site you need to buy new equipment okay if you buy a new equipment that cost is considered capex okay if you build a network you want the services of rf engineers you want the services of optimization engineers you want the services of uh, of drive test engineers so that's also a service cost under capex now once the site is uh, already up okay and then you need maintenance okay power uh, cost cost of electricity cost of gasoline that goes to the opex operational expense okay operational expense so when you're trying to compute the feasibility of uh, a cell site or a network in a certain area um sometimes you have to call the payback period right so the payback period is a uh, simple math only simple formula of doing this is that you have your capex okay you have your capex divided by <clears throat> you have your revenue minus your opex 
Okay. So in this case, you can calculate how much time you need to recover your capex based on the revenue. That's why um, building a sales site takes a lot of strategy, good strategy and careful planning because there might be some sites that might be that might have negative payback period. What does it mean? If you have a negative payback period, meaning your capex is somewhat high, but your revenue is lower than your OPEX, meaning the amount of uh, money that coming in is very less or less than the operational expenses. That's why your payback period is negative already, meaning you cannot recover anymore the money that you spent in building that sell site. Okay, so that's uh, one of the considerations here. That's why um, many operators are considering to lower their capex and lower also the opex. Okay, so open run promises to lower these two capex and opex. Okay. <clears throat> okay. So last, uh, what date is this? Uh, last. I think 2021, quarter one of 2021. I need to update this slide. Uh, worldwide market shares. 29% um, of the worldwide market share in the Q1 of 2021, uh, Huawei is the is uh, getting 29% of the market share. Ericsson has 15%, Nokia has 15, ZT has 11, and Samsung has three. Okay, so the the. The equipment coming from the antenna to the radio unit to the, the baseband unit, okay, currently are supplied by single vendor. So you cannot see that uh, the radio unit is supplied by a vendor H and then the BBU is supplied by vendor E. It's not happening in our network today. Um, usually what's happening is uh, you buy all the equipment in the run in one vendor okay uh, because it's uh, um proprietary because the protocols here will not talk <laughs> to to the protocol implemented by vendor e to compare to vendor h right so that's uh what we call the vendor lock in okay and those link these equipments are inseparably you no know, Link set of proprietary hardware and software components. Okay, so this is what's happening right now. So the principle of open run uh, goes like this. So you have the core network and the hardware and software which is already happening in the IT world. So this is the manifestation of the broader technology move. We call it the disaggregation, and in the IT world, it's already observed many years ago. It it already happened in the IT world. Uh, this aggregation and run means splitting of the system into smaller subsystems. And then this aggregation means separation of the hardware and the software. As you can see in the previous uh, slides in the 5G that we have, that, that we have uh, discussed earlier, right? So we separate the hardware, the CU and the DU and the RU, and then we separate also the protocol to each uh, corresponding uh, hardwares. Okay. And for open run, we focus on the disaggregation of the radio access network. Open run. Okay. So this is what, what will happen. For the open run disaggregated, the uh, open run is, is also called as disaggregated run. Okay. So in our, our current scenario, we have the core network and traditional network or traditional run. And then you have the core network. What will happen in the, in the traditional run, okay, what will happen in the traditional run is that there will be an, um, a use of the GPP hardware, okay? The, the hardware will be open source. And then the software will be open source. And the interfaces will be open also so that you can interconnect different equipment from vendor A to vendor B vendor B to vendor A, and importantly, 
the network will be um, energized by run intelligent controller or the RIC. Okay. So the run intelligent controller. Okay. So it, so for a, for a network to become an open run, it has an open interfaces enabling multi-vendor run. Okay. A virtualized run software running on a generic IT, increasing the flexibility, um, splitting the different functions in the different base station, and uh, powered by an intelligent uh, system like the run intelligent controller. Okay. Okay. So what oh, what is open run? So open run means open radio access network. So this is an industry movement, okay, that develops this aggregated and interoperable radio access network solutions leveraging on the general purpose processors or GPP hardware and software defined technologies and open interfaces based on industry standards, okay. So that's uh, open run. No? So, so one of the benefits of open run uh, is the diverse vendor ecosystem, more competitive supplier environment, fast network uh, deployment, um, access to third-party software developers, automation, okay, powered by the artificial intelligence and the uh, machine learning, okay, um, I, artificial intelligence, machine learning, and uh, lower TCO, no? total cost of ownership because of the uh, RU white box, radio unit white box, COT server, and uh, CICD. And reduce time to market and time of deployment and reduce equipment maintenance costs. So what are the drivers of open run? Um, because of the growing demand, uh, network demand, uh, network virtualization, artificial intelligence, the use of artificial intelligence, and machine learning, and big data, and 5G use cases. Also, of course, there's uh, challenges no? uh, when deploying open run. It's not, uh, it's not all benefits. So the common concern regarding the open run is the ability to match performance of proprietary hardware platforms. So some recent uh, lab trials and live deployments addressed at the end of the uh, address as uh, the proof that open run is meeting performance objectives next is uh, fault management okay so when something goes wrong in the network isolating the component that is the source of the problem can be more complex in an open run environment so to solve this problem uh, the network management tools have been developed for open run so it contributes to root cause, the uh, root cause analysis and speedy uh, issue resolution. Of course, network automation. So to fully realize the benefits of open run and to manage complexity, operators must invest in cloud management technologies and extreme automation, including the orchestration and the zero touch provisioning. And of course, if it's a new movement, New equipment, new protocols, okay, new interfaces, new architectures. Uh, we need to understand the open run ecosystem. Especially for us engineers, one of the biggest enhancements to the open run is the end of the vendor lockdown age, right? So if you are um, familiar with the existing vendors right now, and then there's a lot of players coming in, so there's a need uh, to learn those uh, equipment, right? So different new, new vendors are appearing to supply hardware and software for each element on the network. And then there's the run intelligent controller. So it's important that everybody or everyone involved uh, is aware of all the new hardware and software that currently exists, as well as all the providers. Okay. So for this issue, uh, several initiatives were born to help companies understand and begin in this journey. Like, for example, what Asia Open Run Academy is doing. And this one is for new team profiles. Okay, so in Open Run, the lines between the world of telecommunications and the world of IT are blurred. 
So they are overlapping, they start to overlap, lie, overlap. Not on the extent of Milky Way and Andromeda Galaxy. Yeah. <laughs> it's starting to overlap. No? Uh, this implies that the roles of uh, and responsibilities defined so far within the world of mobile networks change with the arrival of Open RAN. So you can see here no, that, you are, that a, a telecom engineer is now studying virtualization, artificial intelligence, and machine learning software-defined networking. And the IT guys are starting to understand the radio environment, okay? Propagation, antenna concept, uh, cable losses, link budget, no? Because there is some uh, merging of those two industries. So we highly recommend that you become a hybrid as well. So if you are familiar with the telco, you start to study more on the IT. And if you're on the IT, you need to uh, learn about telecommunications. So when it became fully blown, especially here in the Philippines or in abroad, you are ready, you are prepared, okay? Okay, so these are, are some uh, typical hardware, a GPP hardware. Uh, low-cost radio access network or white box hardware used in the open run. Uh, so this is uh, one example coming from Ranathon. Okay, so this is a white box hardware refers to a computer hardware such as servers or networking equipment that is assembled using a one uh, off-the-shelf component instead of proprietary parts. So we call it the white box hardware. So it will be based on the ORAN specified open front hole interface and split 7-2x, uh, okay? Um, application, typical applications is in the R O R U and the ODU and the front hole gateway. So the front hole gateway will be implemented like this. So this uh, coming from the Lions technology. No? So you have the BBU, and then you have the front hole gateway, and then you have the maximum 8 RU per cell. So it looks like it's a typical example of an, uh, a small cell application if you're familiar with the small cells application. It's still uh, 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 almost have a 8 RU per cell. Okay, So this is a typical example of a low-cost hardware uh, solution no, from Lions technology. 